Paddy, firstly, tell, tell me what you do. All right, so I'm a, an infectious diseases doctor. So I'm an infectious diseases specialist. I work up in St. Vincent's Hospital. I'm also a professor, so I do a lot of research on in infectious diseases up in UCD. At the moment, there's, there's so much confusion. You have half the people are sitting on the fence. A lot of people think it's scaremongering. Then other people are freaking out and taking it very seriously. Where, 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 where are we at with coronavirus right now? Like? So first up, um, the, there's no scaremongering going on. Okay? I, I've been in the game for 20 years. I've got colleagues that are retiring who've been working on in infectious diseases for 40 years. No one has seen anything like this. When we look at what's happened in China, when we look at what's happened in Italy, and all things aside, these are countries that have really good setup, they've got really good specialists, they've got really good hospitals, um, and despite all of that, their train crashes. So what we're doing here is we're looking at this train it's coming towards us that we know is going to crash. Because it's that's kind the sort of feeling we've got. It's kind of like a wind, right? That's coming from China, and it just hasn't hit here as such yet, right? Yeah. When you say when you say you know could be a complete disaster, what is what is worst case scenario? Like what is that? And, and I'm not saying that in a panic mongering way, but I'm just wondering what is that? You know. Worst case scenario is that you're going to get thousands of people dying of this infection, that the health care system is so overwhelmed that even if we could have saved some of these people, a lot of these people will not have the capacity to save. And that is scary for everyone because that's the sort of thing that's happening in other countries. So if you want to know where we're going to be in two weeks time, if we don't get this right, all you have to do is look at where Italy is now. So if anybody wants to know how bad this is, yeah. look at where Italy is now. Okay. If if you thought you might have had this, firstly, can you could could you get this twice? Do we know that? Everything's a possibility, okay? But by and large what we're seeing is the vast majority of people that get this get it once and they'll get a mild infection. The few cases that have been reported of people getting it again, they've had a mild infection the first time, they get a mild infection the second time. So okay. That's not so much the issue. The issue is it's a small proportion of people that if they get it, they get a bad infection. Now, it's a small proportion, but if you look at it across the whole population, a small proportion of the whole population getting really sick all at once collapses the system. Absolutely. If you were to say to people, if you could talk to every single person, what would, what would be the things you would be saying to them? First of all, take this seriously. Okay? Uh, the government's taken really radical measures and it's causing a huge amount of disruption, but they've taken it for a reason. And they haven't, they haven't taken these measures so that people can go out and start partying or you know, have a couple of days off and maybe go on holiday or you know, go to the cinema. Because this That's is what I had yesterday evening with our eldest lad, right? He came in, he didn't wash his hands when he came in, firstly, um, said that we were all overhyped about it, um, was looking forward to a skiing trip to Austria that got canceled today, thank fuck. And but his attitude is just like, you know, this is all, this is all scaremongering, this is all hype. You know the, the 21 and the 22 year olds, yeah. right? Is, is look around your family, right? And look around the older people in your family and say to yourself, see if I don't get this right, I might still be here in six months time, but a few of them may not be. Yeah. And that's, what, that's the, re the grim reality. You've got one chance at this, See, this and if is we don't get it right, it, we, we can't go back and change it. What about people like, my, like ourselves who have kind of older parents? Like, can I go visit my mum? Can I, can I, can I, how do I check on her? How do I keep her from being... So I'll tell you what I've, what I've advised my parents to do. I've advised my parents to do social distancing. So my parents live in Donegal. Okay? Now, there's not a huge number of cases in Donegal, but I've said to them, you know what? You cannot afford to get this infection. So. Staying in the house, if they go out, they go out for a walk along the beach or they go out. None of my family are visiting them, but we're really close family, so we're keeping in touch a lot. But they're, they're buying into this 100%. None of them are visiting. No personal contact. If they're getting the shopping, they're getting the shopping delivered and they're taking it in from the front door. When they walk into the house from their walk, the first thing they do is they put their coat in one room, they wash their hands, and then they get on with the day. 
you see, I think as Irish people in particular, it's such a hard thing for us to do. Like if you go to, if you go to an Asian country and you say, I want you to wash your hands 25 times a day, I want you to go into your house, I don't want you to have any social contact and go into isolation. As a nation, they will go, okay, yeah, we'll do it. Irish people, Okay, no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to generalize. Yeah, right? no, but either do I. But I just come having lunch with an Italian doctor, right? And I was saying to him, like, he was telling me what was going on in, in Rome, okay, at the minute, right? In Rome, there's not that many cases in Rome. Um, they're allowed out to the supermarket. When they get to the supermarket, they're given an allotted time to go into the supermarket. They've got to wait for, it's like one person in, one person out, you know, like a nightclub type system, so there's not that many people in the supermarket. They're not allowed to go out for a run. They're not allowed to go out for a jog. If they're caught outside the house, unless they go into the supermarket or the pharmacy, they're fined, right? Now, Baz, you know Italians. I know Italians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Italy, yeah, this yeah, is Italy. Yeah, yeah they're like, so if they, social. If any population in Europe, you would have thought to yourself, there's no way they're buying into this. The Italians have, but do you know why? Because they're seeing what this is doing to their country. Yeah. And if you think that the Irish are going to be any different, I can't see it. People need to, to, to take a look up and look around them at what's happening in, in Italy, and this is what the Italians are buying into. And if, if the Italians, as a social, rebellious, beautiful race, yeah. are following the line, then we, we'll we have need to, to do, do that too. These might seem like really stupid questions, but these are kind of things that people have asked me to ask you. Like, can you walk your dog? Can you take your kids to the park? Can you take them out? There's nothing stopping you from doing that. That may change, okay? Because so we're in a certain phase at the we're moment, in a certain right? Phase, yeah. We're not in lockdown. What we have are these what are called non-pharmaceutical interventions. Right? It's coming though, is it? So it's, there's it's, a lockdown coming. This is going to be gradual, you know. Yeah. If we don't, if we get this right, then it's short-lived and not severe. Okay. If we don't get it right, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. At the minute, you want to go walk your dog. You want to go for a jog. Go for it. If you're going to bring your kids down to the play park. What is the point of bringing your kids to your play park to run around with 30 or 40 other kids? They may as well be at school. Have a bit of common sense. Yeah. Defeats the purpose. It's about social distancing. Yeah. Three things you've got to remember. Yeah. The first one is you want, to, you want to stop large gatherings because you want to slow down the spread of the infection. Right? This virus doesn't care who you are. Right? And it will take an opportunity to spread. The, more, the, the faster that spread happens, the more chance there is it's going to impact older people and vulnerable people and the more chance we're going to get overwhelmed. Children carry it but are, are less affected by it, is yeah, that so, right? So everybody's susceptible, okay? So if you haven't been infected, you can get infected. Okay. We know that. In terms of, of whether you get sick or not, mm. that changes. So the older you are, the more chance there is that you're going to get sick. Once you get into your 70s and 80s, the mortality is like over 10%. Okay. Yeah. Even young people can get sick. So people in their 20s mm. aren't immune from getting yeah. sick. They can still end up in ICU. Yeah. Kids, we're not really seeing yeah. them getting sick. Yeah. Okay? But it doesn't mean that they can't transmit. Yeah. Just because you're sick doesn't mean you can't transmit. Yeah. What, what if I'm in a scenario where I think I'm infected, right? I know the doctors won't visit me, so I call. But I live in a house with eight, eight, eight people, right? So. So what am I doing? Am I, am I self-isolating in my own house? Like, what do I do in that scenario? So the, the current guidance as it stands at the minute is, if I was to wake up tomorrow morning, so there's five of us in the house, if I was to wake up tomorrow morning and I start cough, coughing and I've got a high fever, I should self-isolate. Okay. Okay. And I, because I work in the healthcare profession, I've got to call my employer, so I shouldn't go into work. Okay. If there's someone in the house who's incredibly vulnerable, like for example, if I was living with my grandparents, I really need to find a way to isolate myself from them to avoid them getting sick. If there's no one vulnerable in the house, you know, if it's me, Kira, and the kids, yeah. if they end up getting it, the consequences probably aren't going to be that bad. Okay. So everyone has to have their own plan. For example, if, if you are, just say you're a uh, if, if your parents, two young kids, living with your grandparents, or a single parent living with your living with your parents, sure, you've got to take extra special precautions if those people are, are elderly. So you know, there's no way that that kid's getting their birthday party, or you know, you're not going to be doing play dates because yeah. you want to protect your parents. Yeah. So it's about it's about people looking at their own environment, saying, who do I need to protect? So it's, it, and, and if people start thinking that way, then they start making the right decisions. Yeah. So it's not so much about what can I do, what can I do, it's how can I help prevent this damage in other people. Yeah. 
how do we help like uh, the more vulnerable and the elderly without while keeping them isolated? That's what I'm wondering. It's so it's. I think the, the word isolated. I'll stick to social distancing. Okay. Social distancing is le is at least social. Yeah. There's an, and try and keep that element of social in there. You know, making sure that people around you have if if they are living alone or for example if there's an elderly couple, um, making sure they keep regular contacts. So I'm phoning my mum more than ever now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Which she probably, I don't know if she likes it or not. Yeah. But, anyway, but um, we have that ability now. We've got that ability to interact with people at a lot of different levels, right? And reducing the contact. So, you know, if they, if they need something in the forums, just go and get it for them. If they need a bit of shopping, help, it, help them arrange it, give them a bit of advice, and give them support. The big thing about this is that, obviously, I think probably there's going to be a group of people that are scared, people that are vulnerable, people that are sick, people that are older are scared. You need to have a whole lot of reassurance from the rest of society that we're going to look after you. Yeah. The society level, it's the wrong thing. If people are thinking, me, 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 what they need to be doing thinking is what is best for, for the, the people yeah. that need it. Tell me from a positive point of view, if we were to maintain it, if we were to switch on and do what we're supposed to do, like how, how, how quickly could we contain this or what, what type of timeline are we talking, do you know? Okay, so we're going to be... What people should expect, right, we, we've, we've taken the first measures now and they're drastic. If people buy into it today and really take it seriously from today, what we'll probably see over the next 10, 10 days to two weeks is a big rise in the numbers because they're happening anyway. Yeah. Okay. This, this virus is incubating out there and it's spreading. So we're going to see a big rise in the numbers as that incubation is. And we're going to have, we're going to have a horrible time in the hospitals as this evolves, okay? We're already having a horrible time, it's just gonna continue, right? And people are gonna have a horrible time with their relatives getting sick, okay? Then eventually, if the measures kick in, yeah. from now, yeah. what we'll see is that peak in about two weeks time, and we'll start to see it drop off, okay? And once we see that cons a, a consistent drop off, we will know that the measures that we're doing are working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's your it's it's that it's that start of the drop off is where you're seeing the beginning of the end of this. As soon as you see that drop off, we know that we're coming out of this. How long that takes, I don't know. It could be very rapid, mm. or it could tail off for a few weeks. But at least everyone will know that we're coming out of this. If you were to wake up tomorrow with a cough and, and a fever, fever, yeah. Do what everybody else does. Yeah. Stay at home. Isolate yourself. And you know, if within one or two to three days that fever settles and the cough settling, it's likely that you've had it and it's just Passed. edging away. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. And then you can forget about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If you're getting sick, don't sit at home getting sick. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're vulnerable, if you've got a lung condition and you, you start to get fevers and your breathing starts to get bad, get yourself in the hospital. Yeah. But you're not going into hospital to be isolated, you're going into hospital to be treated. Yeah, yeah. And that's the difference. Up until the government's announcement, people were going into hospital to be isolated. We're not doing that anymore. Mm. You're going into hospital to be treated. And if you need to go to hospital, you go to hospital. Yeah. What about a vaccine? What are we looking at for a vaccine? You're looking at 18 months, so vaccine is not going to be our answer. Okay. And medication is not going to be our answer. Our only answer is these things called the NPIs, these non-pharmaceutical interventions, because we don't have a pharmaceutical treatment. Um, and we, so there's no other solution. It has to be this thing. It has, it has to, to be, be this. And it's the only thing that works. The only thing that works. Let's do it up then. Love us. <laughs> Great, thanks buddy. <laughs>